All right. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Dr. Bestie, and this is Monopoly and Brooke, and we'd like to discuss this morning uh, a common problem I see in the veterinary hospital, ear issues, ear infections, um, in dogs and cats. Monopoly is one of the dogs that does have ear infections, and one of the most common uh, signs of an ear infection in a dog is scratching at their ears, or shaking their head, or even some animals will rub their face on the side of the ground, or some animals are very stoic and won't let you know unless you sit there and rub their ears and they let out a cry. And Monopoly's ears are doing a lot better now, but Monopoly had a very nasty ear infection in both ears. And the most common causes of ear infections that I see are allergies, probably the number, num number one cause, and to some extent just the anatomy of the ear. Dogs' ears are very often floppy, hairy ears, no light gets in the ear, very little air gets in the ear, so it's a perfect area for bacteria to grow in, and at some point yeast and uh, other unwanted organisms. And Monopoly had them all and we've been taking care of that. So cleaning the ear is very important. Medicines that you put in the ear work better if you clean the ear, and bacteria don't grow as well in a clean ear. Well, some dogs have a lot of hair in the ear, which makes it even harder to clean and harder to fight infection. Well, most dogs, healthy hair in the ear will always point out so that the wax that is made in the ear canal by the normal healthy cells will always go out. When a dog gets ear infections and the hair is long and curly or even obstructs the ear canal, the wax doesn't go out. And then if you have a dog who has an ear infection and the ear canal is swollen, the wax just sits there and things brew inside of it. So it's important if needed to get some of that hair out of the canal. If the dog doesn't have an ear infection, you leave it alone. Um, but if the dog does have an ear infection and you are treating the ear, you clear as much of the hair out of the ear canal as you can. And you can see with Monopoly here, we've been working on it, and you don't have an excessive amount of hair in the ear canal. Um, and Monopoly's come a long way with a very nasty organism in the ear. So to clean the ear, don't be shy. There's a lot of ear washes on the market and a lot of good ear washes. And don't be shy with the amount that you put in the ear, almost to the point of being wasteful. You give it a good squirt. I'm not counting drops, I'm just giving a good squirt, or several squirts, and then I'm rubbing the ear so that it gets down in the ear canal, and you have a lot of contact with a lot of the, most ear washes dissolve wax, dissolve dead skin, dissolve pus have an antiseptic in it to kill bacteria and yeast, and also smell good. So the more contact you have in there, the better. Once you've rubbed the ear canal, it's, it's not so important for you to be cleaning down deep in the canal. And again, like humans, the use of Q-tips is not really recommended because you don't want to be pushing some wax and pus towards the eardrum. You want it to come out. So that what is usually recommended is just taking gauze or cotton and wiping the outside of the ear, like so. And then when you are done with that, if you let the dog shake, a little bit of the ear wash comes out, a little bit of pus comes out, a little bit of the wax comes out. Now, I just said don't use Q-tips, but I'm gonna be honest. As a veterinarian, I do use Q-tips sometimes. I try not to go too deep and just take out wax that I can see and not go deeper and be very careful not to push any material farther down in the canal. And I just wipe it out. Now, Monopoly does not have much in there now because we have been aggressively treating Monopoly in the clinic now for a couple weeks. But if I had done this a couple weeks ago, you would have seen just a tremendous amount of pus. And Monopoly, if I had 
rub the ears like this or touch the ears um, would actually cry a little bit. So, another thing that's important when you treat an ear infection, you want to get the right medicine. Um, antibiotics don't cure ear mites. Ear mite medicine doesn't kill bacteria. It doesn't kill yeast. Antibiotics don't kill yeast. So, so you, you want to know what you're dealing with. And the veterinarian will usually have a feel for what is growing in there, but the only way of telling is to really make a little smear and look on the microscope and see what type of organism is growing. If I dump antibiotics into an ear that has a yeast infection, antibiotics aren't going to do anything and probably will make it worse. So it's important that if it is a yeast infection, which usually are very smelly, waxy ears, um, that I put in an anti-yeast product. Some, some ears, you got to put combination products in. You got to put an antibiotic in it, and you got to put something to kill yeast because they have more than one organism growing in there. But uh, also important is putting something in the ear drops that relieves the itch and the pain. I can put the best antibiotic in a bacterial ear infection, but if the dog's still scratching at his ears and shaking his head and rubbing his face on the floor, the ear's not going to get a lot better. So the Monopoly had medicine in the ear that also is for pain. And, and that helps treat the ear infections a lot better too. Another thing about ear infections is overtreat. The kind of organisms that we find, the bacteria that we find in the ear canal are the type that commonly get resistant to antibiotics. So that if there are any left in there and it grows back, and dogs with allergies, you usually do get more than one ear infection. If that bacteria comes back, it will eventually become resistant to your antibiotic and you gotta use another antibiotic. And you can grow a real nasty bug in there. So uh, with repeated ear infections, overtreat with antibiotics, be excessive with the amount of medicine you put in the ear. And when you're through with the infection, or even before you put in the antibiotics, use the ear cleaners. You don't have to have a dirty ear to use an ear wash. The ear wash is changing the environment of the ear so the bacteria and yeast don't grow well. It makes the ear smell better. So that even if there's no wax in the ear, if you're putting the ear wash in there, bacteria aren't going to do as well. So that even if the ears are clean and you don't see wax in the ear, and the dog isn't shaking his head, Use ear wash once a week just to prevent an organism from growing. It works for Monopoly. <laughs> okay.